Good afternoon. Are you smiling? I can't tell. Are you happy to be here? Good. Please be seated and let's listen to our welcome by our salutatorian, Devin Thomas. Greetings and salutations, honored parents, students, faculty, and administration of St. Patrick's Catholic School. To you, my fellow graduates, take a moment to think about the past nine years and all of the accomplishments that have brought us to this moment right here, right now. And celebrate what it means to you. I mean, here we are, after elementary and middle school. I still remember walking into kindergarten for the first time and aching to climb up into Miss Marotti's elevated fort to read. Every year holds its own unique and special memory for each one of you. As Charles Dickens wrote in A Tale of Two Cities, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. And this holds true for us graduates. Through all the hardships and tribulations, we have been together strong and united 
as one single community. And for this reason, we should acknowledge the following for their contribution to get us to the celebration. To the administration and office staff who work tirelessly behind the scenes, making significant decisions leading us in the right direction. To the teachers, you're the backbone of our learning experience. To my classmates, the graduates, for making historic memories and everlasting friendships together. And finally, the biggest thank you is extended to the parents. Your guidance, support, and love hold us up as we strive to achieve our goals. The last few months have truly shown us that together we can get to the worst of times. And today, we celebrate the best of times. Graduates, take this moment to congratulate yourselves on a job well done and enjoy your celebration. Stand, and we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We have many blessings to thank the Lord for this day. We also recognize that at times we have failed. And so we can begin our celebration by acknowledging our need for God's mercy and rejoice in the forgiveness God offers us. Lord Jesus, you are gentle and humble of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You guide us every day of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father of every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care for us and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength and to love our brothers and sisters as you love us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you wish, my son, you can be wise. If you apply yourself, you can be shrewd. If you are willing to listen, you can learn. If you pay attention, you can be instructed. Stand in the company of the elders. Stay close to whoever is wise. Be eager to hear every discourse. Let no insightful saying escape you. If you see the intelligent, seek them out. Let your feet wear away their doorsteps. Reflect on the law of the Most High, and let his commandments be your constant study. Then he will enlighten your mind and make you wise as you desire. The word of the Lord. We are his people, the flock of the Lord. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord now with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. We are his people, the flock of the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God. He made us, we are his. His people, the sheep of his flock.
Go now within his gates giving thanks. Enter his courts singing praise. Give him thanks and bless his name. We are his people, the flock of the Lord. Indeed, how good is the Lord. His mercy endures forever. For the Lord his is faithful. He is faithful from age to age. We are his people, the flock of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you are enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable, on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. As we pray for our hopes and needs, let us, the graduating class of 2020, focus on what we truly need from our loving God and the hopes we bring today for our future. We pray for continued guidance from our church, pastor, Catholic community, and for all the wonderful people who have been, in, who have been our role models, living saints who walk among us, showing us who, how the how to truly live a life according to Jesus' teachings. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray to God for the gifts of courage and strength for those times when our faith is tested and for the challenges high school will bring us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In just a few weeks from now, 
I will mark my first anniversary as pastor of St. Patrick's. I became pastor on July 1st of last year, but I was already here in June. And I remember one of the first masses I attended was the graduation class uh, of the class of 2019. And during that mass, I remember thinking to myself, oh, next year, I'll be the one who will be presiding and preaching. But I didn't think it was going to be like this. Never did I imagine anything like this. And I'm sure you did not imagine that your graduation would be like this. But we have faced many challenges that have come our way in these last three months, and we have grown because of it. Many challenges like distance learning, wearing masks wherever we go, social distancing, being careful about where to go and what we touch, and many, many more challenges. We've had to adapt and to change. Sometimes it seemed like on a daily basis. But you know, change is one of the signs of growth. The ability to adapt is one of the signs of being human. And you know, with every change, with every challenge that comes our way in life, God always gives us the grace that we need to face the challenge, and not simply to endure, but to grow because of it. So what have we learned through all of this change and adaptation during these last several months? Have we learned to be kinder, to be more considerate of others? Or did it make us bitter or angry or impatient or rude to others? It all depends on how you handled the challenges that came your way. And you know, it's a good lesson. Because life is full of challenges. You will face new challenges next year as you enter high school. God willing, after that, you'll go to college and face even more challenges. And as you move into the world and establish your career, to perhaps start a family or answer the Lord's call to a religious vocation, you will face challenges as well. I want you to remember two things about facing challenges and about living for the future. Number one, as I mentioned, God will always give you the grace to face new challenges. And number two, every challenge is also an opportunity to serve. First of all, always remain close to God. You can be sure that God will be with you as you face new challenges ahead. God will never abandon us. God will always be with us. Sometimes we may forget or not recognize the presence of God with us as we face new challenges every day, but God is always faithful. My favorite saying, I used it a few weeks ago in a homily on Pentecost, I may not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. Of course, God. God holds our future. God knows our future. He doesn't impose it on us, but he says, wherever you go, I will be with you. I will be your God, and you will be my child. My second point, every challenge is an opportunity to serve. Look at all of those heroes who have stepped forward 
in these days of the COVID-19 pandemic. People who dug down deep and found strength they never knew they had. Who were creative in facing new challenges on a daily basis. Doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, first responders of all sorts. People reaching out to those in our society who were vulnerable, making sure that they were okay. People collecting literally tons and tons of food to feed those who were lacking basic necessities. Teachers who made extraordinary efforts to make sure you continued to learn even though you could not be in school. Parents who had to juggle many additional responsibilities even as they worried about the health and safety of their families. People found the grace of God enabled them to serve in ways they never imagined they could. I think today's gospel sums up the challenge before you as you graduate. Be the light of the world. Be the light that gives witness to your trust in the Lord. Be a light that brings hope to others by the care that you extend to those who are in need. Be a light that exposes the evil of racism and all forms of prejudice. I pray that yours will be the generation that will finally eradicate racism. Be a light that shows that young people can make a difference in our world. And now we offer our prayers together, expressing our trust in God's goodness to us and asking the Lord to watch over us. We pray we will be like Christ as we, as we make new friends, that we are accepting and non-judgmental, that we are kind, helpful, and beacons of love and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our teachers who have been with us every step of our way in our spiritual and academic journey. May you always be guided by the Holy Spirit and continue to demonstrate the values of teachings of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those in need of our prayers, the lonely, the homeless, the grief-stricken, the, hung the hungry, the sick, that they may know and feel our love for them as we strive to make their lives better, so they may know the love of God through us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parents and families that they may always know the love we have for you and that we may always make you proud of us as we live with Christ's heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For these and all of the intentions we hold dear in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, hear the prayers of your faithful children and grant all that we need to serve you faithfully in this life. We ask it through Christ our Lord. together. 
together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let us pray together that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gave us your Son to rescue us graciously from death and from every evil, accept, we pray, in mercy this sacrifice which we offer you in thanksgiving for our deliverance from all distress, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Jesus your Son. And so, in company with the choirs of heaven, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all who serve and minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Patrick, St. John Eudes, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus, our brother, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. For the distribution of Holy Communion today, uh, Deacon Mike or I will come to you. Deacon Mike will take this side. I'll take this side. When we come to your row, if you wish to receive communion, please stand. We'll put communion in your hand and we'll use the empty rows in between to pass in front of you. Purify my heart. Let 
Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold. Refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through this bread of life are pleased to free your servants from the bond of sin and in your compassion to restore their strength, grant us to advance without hindrance toward a future, toward the hope of your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as we start our graduation exercises.
only agreed to take the speaking part so I could take this thing off for a while. Good afternoon. I'd like to extend a personal welcome to the parents, grandparents, families, friends. Wait a minute. That was last year. We, uh, I think we're going to go a little off script today. Uh, we've been off script for the last three months, so why stop now, right? So um, there's some stuff here I could say, but really, I, let's just start by thanking some very important people in the room right now. Um, the gentleman sitting behind me, Father Ron, Father Bill, Father Ben, Father Frank, Deacon Mike, I'd like to thank Mrs. Nelson, uh, Mr. Sestito, <coughs> excuse me, um, parents for sure, graduates definitely for hanging in there, and, and did anybody ever have a doubt that today would come? I mean, a graduation day. We all, we all knew that this day would come, but did you think that we would be here? Yes, of course we did, because we are people of faith, and sure enough, here we are, here we are indeed. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind as we were, I, 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 I could say a lot of things and I'd probably just mess it up anyway. Um, you're going to hear a, a beautiful address from our class uh, valedictorian in a few minutes. Uh, Mrs. Nelson uh, will certainly have some remarks and I could not uh, improve upon what Father Ron said in his homily. So um, we are just going to get started with the conferral of the, uh, your eighth grade diplomas, if, if you don't mind. Is that okay with everybody? I assume you're smiling behind those masks. Come on, let's hear it. Let's go. All right. Now, I, I will say this, because I, I, I wrote this a few years ago, and it's so awesome that I must read it to you. Um, <laughs> I know. You're about done with me, I know. Um, all right, so seated before us today is an eighth grade class that has worked with diligence and, <laughs> and perseverance, for sure, uh, during their time at St. Patrick's Catholic School. They have matured spiritually and prospered academically. The students are now prepared to move on as faithful servants of Christ and lead others with devoted hearts and prepared minds. So <clears throat> it is our honor to present each eighth grade student with a diploma, a symbol of their hard work, commitment and achievements. A um, couple of housekeeping notes. When we conclude here today, stay seated. Uh, when, when Father and his uh, crew leave, uh, just stay where you are. Uh, we will uh, have an opportunity to, um, e each graduate and their parents will have an opportunity to have their picture taken down by the altar. And the graduates know what to do. We practiced earlier today. Um, and then the graduates will, uh, head, you guys will all head out that door over there. And you'll see Mr. McGowan take your gowns back to the uh, hall and sadly go home. We cannot hang around. So um, I think that's everything. Oh, no. There's one more thing. What's the one thing? Yeah, you guys know what it is. <clears throat> so I don't know why I started this a number of years ago, but I did. And I told you early in the year, I said, when we studied the Constitution, I said, you cannot graduate unless you answer one question at graduation. So what do we call the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution? Well, usually it's a bigger voice than that, but there's only half of you here, so that's okay. Yeah, the Bill of Rights, that's right. Your Bill of Rights, make sure you protect it. All right, um, I think that's enough of that, so let's get to it. Please hold your applause until all of the students have received their diploma. 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 That's the key word, okay. Mrs. Nelson, Father Ron, if you'll take your positions, we'll get going here. Okay. Vincent Adrian Adelano. Lindsay Baer. Jackson Bell.
Blair Duffy. Audrey Fetters. Caroline Victoria Guiling. Owen Gergerich. Sophie Gersh. Matthew Hammond. Charlie Hartman. James Johnson. Parker Mayo. Charles Bain Gerald McGowan. Leah Nance. Carrie Osterhout. Sadie Owens. Lauren Prieto. Mia Cozy. Kelly Sands. Mary Sanchez. Natalie Shippen. Sonny Tejero. Bella Town. Jesse Vosberg. Jenna Welly. Athena Wisner. Ayla Yasukochi.
Please join me in congratulating the graduating class of 2020. And can you believe we only had one practice? Pretty good. Good job, guys. Ms. Dubra. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with announcing the awards and recognitions of the students of the class of 2020. Um, I have to say I got a little bit broken up over here a minute ago just knowing that we were able to put this together for our students and our families. So I'm really excited about this. Um, Will all students wearing a gold honor sash please stand? These are students who earned an overall GPA of 3.75 or higher for the entire school year. Okay. We commend you for your commitment to your academic career and encourage you to use your knowledge and skills for the benefit of our church and the spread of the gospel message. Next, we would like to recognize our individual students who have demonstrated exceptional talent in specific subject areas. They have all displayed a special aptitude, passion, and willingness to go beyond what is expected and truly embrace learning and critical thinking. Please stand as I call your name. Kindly hold all applause until all names have been called. In the subject of religion, Caroline Geiling and Joseph Van Horn. In language arts, Audrey Fetters and Lily Galluccio. In math, Angelina Burbank and Sophia Padua. In literature, Molly Glass and McKenna Reyes. In history, Owen Gergerich and Peyton Miller. In science, Devin Thomas, Jillian Steinbus, Isabella Flores, and Mary Sanchez. In Spanish, Gabriel Steer and Sari Torres. In technology, Lucian Strona and Claire Duffy. In PE, Dan Connorth and Shay Johnson. In music, Joaquin Oades and Julia Wallace. In drama, Parker Mayo and Athena, I'm gonna mess this up, sorry. Weisner? Weisner. I apologize, Athena. My apologies. And I'm the English teacher. Um, and then in the subject of math independent study, this is a student who completed both algebra and geometry this year, and that was Sophia Padua. Please join me in congratulating the special achievement of these students. Every year, two students are recognized for their outstanding contributions to our community. We are extremely proud to announce this year's recipients. The St. Augustine Award for Boys goes to Jackson Bell. The Daughters of the American Revolution Citizenship Award for Girls goes to Ava Wagner. Please give them a well-deserved round of applause. It is now my pleasure to introduce this year's class valedictorian, Sophia Padua. Hi. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Faith. It does not make things easy. It makes them possible. Luke chapter 1, verses 37. This verse rested comfortably on the back of our class sweatshirt. But it was only until now that I truly understood its message. Our faith is always something in which we can rely. But that doesn't necessarily mean that faith is the answer to everything. Rather, it's that glimmer of hope in the darkness. 
From the beginning of our St. Patrick's journey, faith has been a constant foundation. Our parents had faith in St. Pat's, which educates children about God along with the necessary skills and knowledge for success in our futures. They could have transferred us elsewhere because of tuition expenses, conflicts, or relationships, but they didn't. They had faith in God, in the school, and most importantly, they had faith in us. For that, I say thank you, mom, dad, and every other loving parent that has helped raise fine women and men. Through our journey at St. Pat's, we've had many motivating teachers who have helped us along the way, guiding us with their own faith. Nine years ago, we first learned about God through Ms. Moriarty and Mrs. Meyer in our kindergarten classrooms. Perhaps our six-year-old selves brush it off as something bigger than ourselves, as something that we didn't understand, and that's okay. We were only six years old, after all. As we got older, we started to understand what our teachers were talking about. Wearing pretty white dresses and dapper tuxes, we had our first communion. Yay, we could eat in church now. But still, we didn't really know what was going on with multiplication tables and banana tag racking our brains. We tried our best and had faith in the future that everything itself would sort out. Finally, we made it to sixth grade. Our egos grew with each step we took on that staircase. Sure, there were conflicts between each other, but with the help of Ms. Coughlin and Mrs. Hartman's long talks and lectures, we started to gain our own faith. Perhaps it was the fact that we started to comprehend the Holy Trinity and what church really meant for us. But despite everything, we gained faith in our grade. Through Astro Camp, drama plays, team activities with coach, and fashion shows, our grade created a dynamic like no other. We became the class of 2020. The next year, we entered junior high. Sure, we were scared, but at least we had each other. Mrs. Sperberg and Ms. Kramer welcomed us with open arms, and we realized that we really didn't have anything to worry about in the first place. Our junior high teachers filmed us with their passion, faith, and oh, so many Bible verses, but we managed to get through it all. Through science dissections, CYPs, and pranking Mr. Work, seventh grade came to an end, and eighth grade loomed ahead. Eighth grade, woo. It's been quite an unconventional year. In the beginning, we were ecstatic. New and old faces were etched into our grade as we adjusted to a new, slightly more mature dynamic. Each day we were greeted by Ms. Duriel's energy and Mr. Burke's groovy music, both sometimes a bit too much for a Monday morning. But quickly, we fell into the role of leaders of the school with tiny kinder buddies in issues sweatshirts. Our buddies reminded us of just how old we all were as we taught them about our faith our school and everyday life, things that we were once taught so long ago. Imagine, that was us nine years ago. We found ourselves hyped for retreat, giddy and excited to escape reality and social constructs for just one day. Team bonding and uncooked chicken attacked us on our first day. <laughs> Well, the Olympics and emotional talks hit at night. The campfire illuminated our tear-filled faces as we realized, this is it. Late night feels truly hit as we each opened up 
and listened. We each got to know each other a tiny bit better, awing me that even after nine years, I barely knew my class. After this day, we came back to school emotionally and physically exhausted, bandanas shining brightly in unity for all to see. We gained faith in our class, in ourselves, while our teachers smiled in satisfaction. And even though a historical pandemic hit, one that we all brushed off at first, we made it. With FaceTime, Zoom, and texting, our grade still kept its unbreakable bond and grew even closer. Right now, I stand proud. I said I was not going to cry, but okay. Um, <laughs> right now, I stand proud in front of my class of 2020. Heartbroken, but thankful. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm heartbroken because we missed out on so many important activities. <sighs> Shoot, okay. <laughs> heartbroken because we missed out on so much time spent together. Heartbroken. Because all I want is just to hug you all one last time. Sorry. <laughs> but yet, I'm thankful. Thankful that we get the chance to stand here, face masks and all, together again. Thankful that we get our parents, that they've helped us this much. Thankful that we've had our teachers to guide us through our nine years. Thankful that we had each other as a grade. Thankful for our many different forms of faith. Here's one of my favorite quotes. But what we can do, as flawed as we all are, is still see God in other people and do our best to help them find their own grace. <sighs> That's what I strive to do. That's what I pray to do every day. Barack Obama's words come back to us the future. We're about to venture on into a new chapter of life, high school. Our job as the future generation is to make a change. We have to stand up for our rights, for our beliefs, and most importantly, we have to stand up for our faith. As cheesy as it is, we have to be the best version of ourselves. And even when we're in times of need, we always have our St. Pat's Faith Foundation to carry us wherever we go. Faith. It does not make things easy. It makes them possible. Yes, it makes them possible. And we are the ones who will make that change. Oh, the places will go. Please be careful. I love you all, my graduating class of 2020. Adventure awaits. We got this.
Thank you, Sophia. That was um, pretty hard to follow. But um, I want to start out first by acknowledging that a, a trip through St. Patrick's is not just about a student. It's about a family and a student's family. And I have been blessed to be companions with all of you on this journey, and I am grateful for that. What is interesting is that for some of you, this is the, I hate to use the word end, but it is the end of the, this part of the journey with, of St. Pat's through school because this is either your only child graduating or your last child and I don't know, thank you to the Adelanos and the Gergriches who will keep us here forever. And um, for those of you who are leaving, please stand so that we can thank you for all of the contributions that you have made to this school community and this family of people. And I know there, you're out there, the Geilings and the Sanchez's and the Osterhout, the, the Yasukochis, the Hammonds. Oh my goodness, it's, it's, it's a lot. And thank you, thank you for all the contributions you've made to the school. Thank you for standing behind the school uh, through the good, through the bad, through all the different, different times. Thank you for being faith role models for your children. And thank you for um, trusting us with them. You know, um, a long, a long time ago, when I was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps, um, part of that training involved going to the basic school, and a part of those of that training was participating in something called land navigation exercises. This was the fear of every second lieutenant around because so much weighed in the balance on successful completion of land nav. Camping was never one of my strong points. Uh, Being a New York City girl, kind of, I don't know if I ever went camping, actually, to tell you the truth. So when I got to the basic school, and they let us know that land navigation would be uh, part of our training, I was okay with it. I was up for the challenge. I figured, what could it be, right? Until I found out what it was. And that meant that we would be dropped off with a compass and a set of points and checkpoints that we had to navigate to and wind up at the rendezvous point at the end. Seems simple enough, except it was at night and it was, you are alone. You are not allowed to have a flashlight. And you had to make all the checkpoints. And it took hours to complete this course with a compass. The compass had no GPS. You couldn't ask it, where am I? How do I get to the next checkpoint? You couldn't do any of those things. All it did was have waypoints, the the directions, north, south, east, west. And it did have one, one plus, it glowed in the dark. So that is what you had. And you had to remember the correct way to use the compass and to trust it. To trust in true north. You had to remember if you got too close to the power lines or if you got too close to a metal fence post or if you got near some rocks that had a lot of metal, metal uh, compounds in them, it would throw off the compass and you would not succeed. If you didn't use the compass to navigate around obstacles, rocks, trees, bushes, shrubs, things you couldn't go through, if you just relied on your feelings about it, you, you didn't succeed. It didn't work out. And you had to be really, really aware of the things that threw off that compass. And when it was all over, and everybody was at the round, round rendezvous points, tired, dirty, walking around in the woods for hours, 
Everybody waited for everybody to get there. And inevitably, there was always one or two lieutenants that didn't show up. They didn't rely on their compass. They didn't trust what they knew was north and how to use the compass. And they got lost. They got really lost because we didn't know where we were. And the enlisted, the, the much smarter than us enlisted guys who would take you to the land navigation course spent great joy in trying to mess us up. They would drive us around in trucks for hours before they dropped us off at the waypoint because they didn't want us to know where we, where we were. And you had no idea where you were when you got out of that truck at night. But one thing you never wanted to be was that lieutenant who didn't show up at the rendezvous point because everybody in the platoon had to go look for you. Everybody. So here you are, tired, exhausted, done with this event, and somebody doesn't show. No man gets left behind. Everybody in the platoon goes out and looks. And sometimes it took hours to find these people. I don't know how they got where they got. But they got far away, and they got way off course. And you just didn't want to be that person, because what happened afterwards was that everybody lost confidence in you, because they knew you couldn't be trusted with the simple, what was really a simple thing of trusting in your compass and doing what you were supposed to do and not letting it be thrown off by things that make it go wonky. They knew you couldn't be trusted to do that. And if you couldn't get yourself from one point to another, how were you going to get all those other people depending on you at some point in time to the right place? You never wanted to be the person the platoon had to go out and find. And you know, you have all of you sitting here have a compass very similar to the one that I had, except it's a moral compass. And the points on it are the values that you have grown up with, the values that you have adopted from your family, from your church, from your, your friends, from your mentors, from your teachers, and they live inside of your heart. And they're all there. And they are what you need to find your way. That moral compass is so important, but there are things in this world that are going to throw your compass off just as sure as that can be. And those are things like falling away from your faith, not trusting in true north, not trusting in God to be that waypoint that everything else can be read from. It, it, it's, it's so important, those values, and everybody has them, we all have them, they're all a little different. Honesty, trustworthiness, faith, courage, individual responsibility, all of those things, you know them, you've heard them a thousand times. But what, what surprises me is that so many of you don't really know what your core values are? Do you know what they are? And will you read your compass when you make decisions? Because using or reading a moral compass is very much like going on a land navigation course. It is using the values and what you know to be true to guide the decisions that you make. I have no doubt in here that, and my mind, that every single one of you, if you use your moral compass, you will make real, because you have, you will make really, really good decisions. Decisions that impact not only yourselves, but the people in your lives and the people you interact with. But sometimes that moral compass gets thrown off, and you have to recalibrate it, and you have to think about it. And how do you do that? You start by thinking about the decisions that you make. Did that decision take, you know, one for sure one way to do that? Did, that? did that decision move you closer to God? Or did it move you further away? Another really, really good way to do that is to, are your parents mad at you? 
because that's a pretty good indicator that that decision, you may have lost your way a little bit on that decision. So take time to recalibrate your, comp your compass. Look at the people you hang out with. Do they have the same moral values that you do? Do they know what their values are? Sometimes big people with big personalities, people who are very swayed by the popular cultural opinions of the time, will throw off your moral compass. You need to recalibrate it. You need to remember what, that God is at true north. And if you stay focused on that, you can turn in any dis direction and wind up at the final rendezvous point where you're supposed to be. So my advice to you is to keep your moral compass handy. Use it to make good decisions and keep it away from the things that will throw it off. Whatever those happen to be, you know what they are. And the world will work hard at trying to throw off your moral compass. Surround yourself with people who honor what is true and what is good and, is, and are motivated by the good of the other. You won't get lost and the platoon will never have to come and find you. Many, many blessings. Do really good work. And love and trust one another and value your family. You've done a really great job. You're a really, really good group of, of I hate to call you kids, but you, you are, but you're people, and you, uh, people who are growing and moving towards those good things to make a change. Don't lose your moral compass. It will never, never steer you wrong if you trust in it. Congratulations and many blessings to all of you. Thank you. Before we have our final blessing, I just want to say a word of thanks to those many people, primarily parents, who worked so hard that we could celebrate the Eucharist at your graduation. It uh, is very encouraging to me as the pastor to know that the Eucharist means so much to you. And even though you're leaving our school, you're still a part of the parish, many of you. Uh, and even if you're not, you're always welcome here. We've worked very hard to open our church up this past week and make it accessible to people again, even in a limited way. We hope you will always be able to find nourishment here. Let us stand for our blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Gracious and loving God, we ask for your guiding hand to be upon our graduates as they and their families thank you for their achievements. May they find comfort from our community's continued embrace and support as they journey through life. May they find strength in the solid faith formation they have received along the way. Bless their lives from this day forward with goodness and success. Enable them to stay true to their dreams for your greater glory, to discern what is right, good, and just, and to use their gifts wisely and in service to others. Empower them to walk into the future with faith, hope, and great love, guided by the light, and may they always strive to make a difference in our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.